Hey everybody, so now we're getting to part four, the actual whelk itself. Uh, last ones were deciding that our dog was okay to be bred. We chose the stud dog. <clears throat> we got the mating timing correct. Uh, we confirmed that the dog is pregnant. And now we are around two months later and we're ready to think about the actual whelk, whether that be a C-section or a natural birth. And um, these videos have been going a bit longer than what I wanted them to. They've been going, you know, 20, 25 minutes a, t a piece. So stop this right now, pause, go get yourself a cup of coffee, get relaxed, because this one's going to take as long as any of them have been so far. Probably going to break this up, actually, into two parts. So I'm probably going to do 4A, which is going to be talking about the actual getting ready for the, the time in the world. And then I'm probably going to separate this into natural and C-sections. But anyway, let's get started to see how far along we go. Okay, so let's talk about the, the, the chemistry in your dog that's going on that determines when whelp is going to happen. And why is this important? It is so important when it's time to do a C-section because if you get it wrong and you take puppies early by more than two days early, you will very likely lose some of the litter. So not a good day. And I... And the, the sad thing about this is, is that the vets will steer you wrong on this. I mean, not all vets, don't get me wrong. Vets are great. I'm, I'm not bashing vets. The problem here, though, is, is that the vets are experts in an entire field of looking after all kinds of animals. And this is a very narrow part. And so they may not be an expert and have a lot of experience specifically in timing C-sections. Um, I have. And so I, I do a huge amount of this. And we do something in the order of, I don't know, 400... Uh, matings every year, the majority of those for other people, but I get involved in the majority of those in timing C-sections. So I have a lot of experience in this. Okay, not wanting to brag, just, just you know, kind of trying to give you some confidence in why what I'm telling you is the right answer. So let's talk specifically about what the heck is going on. So here comes this graph, you're probably getting bored with me drawing this, but here it comes again. So this is a graph of the number of days versus progesterone level. So this is progesterone level. And this is the days, and uh, on this one here, um, we are gonna, we are, well, let's just do this. This is day one of first blood. And this is, um, oh, about uh, 72 days later when whelp's gonna occur. But, um, yeah, don't worry too much about, this is days. This is days, days, in, days since bread, or days since in heat. And this is progesterone level. And I'm going to draw this in nanograms per milliliter. But remember, those of you in Europe, it's nanograms per nanomole. And in those situations, you multiply these numbers by 3.18. So where you'd have a 10 is actually uh, almost a 32 if you're in Europe. Okay. So um, we bred this dog. Um, let's just say we bred this dog at day 11. And so the progesterone level was very low. It came up a little bit and then it went up rapidly. And what happens to progesterone level is it stays high for the entire duration. I'm just going to put a break point there. For the entire duration. And then it starts to drop really rapidly right before well, natural wealth occurs. And this level here can be anything from 20 to maybe 60. And, and interestingly enough, that happens if the dog has been bred or not. Uh, 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 you know, some people say, oh, I did a progesterone level, it was so far, so I know my dog's pregnant. Uh-uh, that's not true at all. Doesn't matter whether your dog was bred or not, the whole cycle happens um, regardless of whether the, the dog is pregnant or whether it was even bred. You know, you'll have a dog can go into what we call a phantom pregnancy and show all the signs of being pregnant uh, and in fact doesn't have any pups on to the point that it even goes actually start to have some contractions, apparently, I've never seen this, but supposedly, certainly can have milk, and show all the outward signs of being pregnant, but it's not. So that's an important point, by the way, that when we do the preg when we're determining pregnancy, that we confirm we really do have, if we have a C-section, we don't C-section a dog that in fact is not pregnant, that would be a bad day. So, but the interesting thing is, is that all of this is actually timed off a thing called the LH surge. LH surge and it's not something it's just a 12-hour spike so we typically don't test this anymore 
But the important thing here is, is the majority of dogs will go into labour 65 days after LA surge. And here is the actual whelp. That is, this is whelp right here, whelp. Natural whelp. I'm going to make sure you can read that on the screen there so I'm not drawing too low on the... On the no, we're fine. Um, okay. So, we actually did the, um, this is ovulation, and ovulation is, is two days after LH surge. So then if you take it from there, it would then be two days less. It'll be 63 days from ovulation. And assuming that we did the AI two days after that, then it would actually end up being 61 days from AI. So, again, yeah, I'm just gonna look at that, make sure we can see all that okay on the screen. Oh yeah, no problem, okay. So, the, 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 the problem with all this, and the thing that you have to get your head around, is just because you AI on this date here, doesn't mean it's gonna be 61 days, because you may have got your AI date wrong. You may have AI'd early, you may have AI'd late. If you AI'd early, then it would be more than 61 days from well. If you AI'd late, then it will be less than 61 days from well. And this is what gets you in trouble. So the problem gets to be in a C-section where the vet did the C -set, did the AI or did a surgical or did a vaginal, and then they make the announcement, oh, we'll come back on August the 3rd and we'll, 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 we'll do a C-section. Uh -uh. No, horrible answer. Because the problem is, is you don't categorically know that you've got the timing right. And so just to categorically say, we're well, gonna go ahead and do a surgery to open the dog up at this date is a huge mistake. It gives you a window of within a few days of when you're likely to be, but it's not a definitive date. And the point is, is that when we get close to this point here, that's the point that we really wanna pay attention to behavioral signs in the dog. Um, and, and the one thing that absolutely is safe is to do a progesterone test and make sure that you are a, lump, a number of less than three. If you're at a progesterone level of less than three, we know we're in this region right here and it's completely safe. But if you take puppies more than two days early, you can have a really bad outcome. So, I mean, naturally you think, well, look, you know, with human babies, well, we have, we have uh, babies that are born, you know, maybe a month early, premature babies, and they do okay. You may have to have them in a prenatal clinic, but they do okay. And we've got things like incubators and oxygen. What's the big deal? Surely, surely being three days early versus two days early can't make much difference, James, can it? Well, the answer is absolutely, it bloody well can. And so what's going on? You've got to think of, of what's going on to the dog for the transition from being in the mum to being outside and not being connected to the mum anymore. When the puppy is in mum, in utero, it is in a omnia amniotic sac filled with amniotic fluid and all of that fluid is in its lungs it's not breathing it is connected through an umbilical cord directly to the mother and oxygen and blood supply and nutrition all comes through through the placenta and the umbilical cord so when the puppy is born the umbilical cord is severed and in that instance that that brief moment right there the lifeline to mom has been severed it is no longer getting oxygenated blood from mum, it is relied purely on its own systems. And what happens is this last 48 hours before natural whelp, surfactant levels in the lungs change to the point that the puppy can quickly get rid of the amniotic fluid and be able to breathe properly. And if you have puppies early, that process has not happened. And what you find is, is that Number one, the puppies are born with slick faces. They look like birds almost. They have kind of bulging eyes and they have no hair on their faces. They're very slick faced. They may have hair on other places. If they don't have hair on other places, you're in a huge problem. But they don't have a, hair, a lot of hair or no hair on their face. And those puppies typically will start to have problems about 48 hours after birth and you will start losing puppies. And you might lose the entire litter, you might lose one or two, you might be able to save them all, but it's a battle. And it's a battle that you don't wanna go through. And it's a battle because you and your vet screwed up. 
So really pay attention to this. Look, if you're having a natural whelp, this is a whole different situation. A natural whelp is timed by mum. She starts having contractions when she's ready. But what we typically do with C-sections is we don't have contractions. We do this before that happens deliberately because we know that having a natural birth, for instance, in French Bulldogs, is, is iffy. Why is it iffy? Because French Bulldogs have big heads and they've got narrow hips with a small opening. Puppies get stuck. A stuck puppy then, and maybe he's got separated from his placenta and it doesn't have very long to live. That puppy dies, blocks the hole up, none of the other puppies come out. And you can lose puppies, the whole litter, or even a mum over getting this by trying to do a natural whelp on a dog like a French Bulldog or a Bulldog. Okay, so the point I want to get across here, the very important point here is, is that since you don't absolutely know that you got the, de the dog bred right, you can't just summarily say 61 days and be safe and know that's the right thing to do it. So the question is, how do you come up with the right day to get to this point and be safe? And that's really what this is going to be about today. Okay. So now let's talk about <clears throat> uh, what the expected behavior is going to be in your dog so you can get an idea about where you are in this whole cycle. And that's helpful not just for people who are having C-sections, but for all of us because we want to be prepared. I mean, we used to raise labs and we never C-section labs. Not one time do we C-section a lab. But we were always, always present for the entire birthing process. There to just to you know, look after mum, give a reassurance, she loved us, we loved her. We want to make sure that we were there to provide any, anything. If she got in trouble, if she was panicking, you know, first time moms, whatever. Plus the whole process is just very exciting anyway. You know, the whole thing is, you know, is definitely, you know, miraculous in terms of what the heck is going on. It is a very, very, to me, exciting, exciting time. And scary to, as well, even when you're having a natural birth. It's, and I mean, those of you who have had babies yourselves, you know the, the excitement and the uh, anticipation and the anxiety that the whole process caused both you and your spouse. Um, so not really any different for us when we're dealing with dogs versus human beings. They're all animals and we care about them all. Okay, so what are the behavior that we can keep track of to find out what the heck's going on? So the simplest tool that you absolutely must have is a thermometer. And uh, we're gonna go over this. This is our puppy care kit. We have a puppy care kit that includes all the stuff that you could possibly need for looking after puppies, including the actual whelp, whether it be natural or a C-section. But one of the things that's included in here is a good old thermometer. Look, you don't have to get a puppy care kit to get a thermometer. You go to Walmart and you can buy a thermometer like this for a few dollars. Fundamental tool. And you press the button and it reads the temperature. We all know how these things work. So when you take the temperature of a dog, if you have one of these scanning temperature things that you do with the forehead, waste of time, won't work. If you've got an infrared gun, I've got people who call me up and say, oh, I've got a temperature, it's, it's really low can't use those in a dog. You've got to stick this up the dog's butt. And the secret to that is, is to have Vaseline, Vaseline this thing up, wipe off her butt first, and get this thing in there, and get it in there at least that far. You want to get it in there, into the dog's butt, at least an inch and a half. If you don't get it in far enough, you'll get a low reading and it'll completely confuse you. But this is a fundamental tool. And by the way, this is a great tool anytime you've got a dog that you're in question as to what the heck's going on. The very first thing, if you call me up and I will ask you is, have you taken the dog's temperature? Because the temperature of a healthy, happy dog will typically be 100.5 or close to it. A dog that's in trouble, I've lost my mark. A dog that's in trouble will, for whatever reason, and is not well, will have a temperature of 101.5 or higher. That is, this is the, this is the warrant, this is just not to do with welfare, this is just to do with dogs in general. That is the temperature that you, if you're above that temperature, it's time to go to your vet. If you don't know what's going on, get your vet involved. 101.5 or higher, bad news, something's brought up, this dog's not feeding well. 
you need to find out what's going on so you can treat it before you get in any trouble. Don't rely on me on these, go to your vet. This is absolutely important on that. Okay, so what is the behavior that we're gonna see? Well, so <clears throat> we're trying to time a C-section or we're trying to decide when the dog's gonna well. How do we know? So these are things that you will see, but except for one of them, which is the progesterone level, none of these are guaranteed that you will absolutely see them. You don't always necessarily see this, but typically this is what you will see. The first one is, a dog that is 24 hours out, well, let's talk about temperature. A dog's temperature will drop from 101, from 100.5 down to less than 99. And when it gets to 98.9 or less, that's puppies within 24 hours. That's a great marker. So you'll see the temperature dropping, you now five days out it might be 100, and it's going down, and it might hang around 95, 99.5. The, the decimal point's important here. So if I ask, if you say the temperature is 99, I want to know that the dog's temperature is 99 point something. 99.0. 98.9 or less, most of the time, you're going to have puppies within 24 hours. Second thing, the dog's appetite drops off. Why? Because it's full of puppies doesn't have much room. And I don't know if this is an evolutionary thing, it may be to do, but anyway, what's gonna happen is, is that typically, again, within 24 hours of, of puppies, no food, will not eat, not eating at all. Not eating. Again, 24 hours. And when I, how do you find out about that? So what you do, <clears throat> when you get close to this point, temperatures are dropping down, in the morning, take that temperature, put it down on a piece of paper, chart it, Take a bowl and put just a few pieces of kibble in there. I mean, literally a couple of pieces. And see how she behaves. Because if she's not, if she's refusing food, you can come back an hour later and you can still see in that bowl two pieces of kibble. You know she's not eating a damn thing. We know that we're probably within 24 hours. If she eats that up, fine, give her more food. Don't, don't starve her. You don't want to have a full belly going into a C-section because the dog can vomit it up and choke and get stuff in their lungs. So. There's another good reason for, for holding back on food when we suspect that we're close. But if she's eating food, let her eat whatever she wants. If she's refusing food, then the couple of pieces of kibble in the bowl will let us know that. <clears throat> Number three, starts to do some nesting. So nesting, what we do is we put our girls into a crate. We use our heated whelping system. We're gonna talk more about that during the actual birth itself. But the, uh, the heated whelping, uh, we use a crate. There's all the different ways you can do whelp. So I'm not necessarily saying you have to use a crate, but whatever you use, I like a crate because when she's there with the puppies, you can control her exit, turn from it, you can lock her up with the babies. They like doing this if you set up the environment right, they feel safe. You, they can't take puppies away in different parts of the house. But if you're gonna do that system, put mum into that environment 48 hours or more before whelp so that she can get used to that. Don't just bring her home and then throw her into a crate she's never been in her, her life because that just causes an extra level of anxiety. If she's used to sleeping on the bed with you, get her off the bed and start getting introduced to a, to a crate. Okay, but the great thing about a crate is you can put newspaper inside it. And it gives you a visual and audible indication of what's going on. So a dog that's nesting doesn't just make a little nest in the corner and they're sitting down it. It is digging for China. I mean, it might dig for a, you know, a whole solid minute just scratching away like crazy. You can be in another part of the house and you'll hear that going on. You hear the newspaper being scratched around you'll be at night time if you've got the dog in a you know close room a utility room or something else with the door open you can hear that going on and you can go off downtown go get your daily business done come back and find all the newspaper is completely sliced up nesting that's typically 12 hours about 12 hours number four panting this is the beginning stages of labor. And typically within six hours or less, you've got puppies being presented. So panting is, it's a continuous <laughs> fast pant. 
It might go on for 20 seconds or a minute, and then she might take a break for 10 seconds and start it back up again. But it, it will be a continuous, you know, she's not hot, she hasn't been outside and exercising, she's not over temperatured, but she is panting. And this might also be involved with shivering. And the reason for the shivering is because her temperature has dropped. Her temperature right now might be 98 or 97 degrees, and so she may be shivering as well. But these, these two together, or either one of these two, is in, in, indicative that you're, you're really close and it's time to start thinking about getting your vet on board. Okay. Um, so then let's keep on going with this. Number five would be uh, a bulge. A bulge out of the back end of the dog where, well, actually contractions is the next thing is contractions. So contractions, if you haven't seen contractions before, just looking to see if I can see that, yeah. If you haven't seen contractions before, the first time you do see contractions, you'll know exactly what it is because it's not a, a breathing thing, it's a tensing up of the whole muscle of the stomach that lasts for anywhere from, you know, a few seconds to 10 seconds. And it's a definite, it's not a breathing in and out, it's a definite contraction, it's a solid contraction of, the, of these muscles. That's her trying to push puppies out. Time to absolutely head to the vet or get ready with all of your whelping stuff if you're gonna have a natural whelp. Number six, water breaks. Remember, each puppy is in its own sack. It's filled with embryonic fluid. And so that sometimes the puppy is born in the sack with the fluid still in place. Sometimes it, it, the process of that puppy trying to be forced through the vaginal canal will break the sack. And here comes the water. And you get, you know, half a cup of water on the ground. Not water, it's kind of a straw colored fluid. It doesn't look like urine, doesn't smell like urine. Um, and, and it's very, it is, you can tell it's different than urine. Um, so, you know, if she's, if she's got wet legs and you go in there and there's water on the, on, on the, on the bedding, she's probably, probably her sack is, is bust. And she's probably, and you can sniff it and see if it smells like urine. If it smells like urine, she's just peed. But if it doesn't, her, her water's broken and it definitely, again, puppies are on the way. Uh, number seven would be presentation of a puppy. So you may see, um, what you'll see is her back end will start to push out. The back end pushes out, her tail kind of, her vulva kind of is swollen, and you can see a definite bulging in the vulva area, and that's a puppy coming out. And you may see a sack, looks like a balloon, kind of a, uh, uh, a uh, latex colored balloon sticking out of the back end, may have a dark object inside it, which is the puppy, or you may see a puppy coming out. So in those situations, um, you know, if, if you're gonna have a C-section and you've got that going on, you're late. So again, with that, you need to be heading in with a car, with all the necessary equipment in case you have to deal with a puppy right there on the road. We'll talk about that here in a moment. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep looking at this to make sure that I can see all this stuff, yes. So water breaks, and this is a puppy being presented. So here comes the puppy, puppy presented. <clears throat> and of course, if you're having a natural well, then this is where you're gonna step in and maybe provide some, well, either way, you're gonna do something here. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, okay, so when we get to this point here, progesterone level is three or less, or less. So you can go to the vet if you think that you're within 24 hours, if actually, if your progesterone level is three or less, you are one to two days away from having puppies and you're safe to take puppies. You, you can't be three days early and people will call me up and say, oh, her progesterone level's five. How many days will it be? Nobody can tell you because progesterone level drop is so varied by dogs. I had a dog the other day that was a level of 16 and the next morning it was 2.5 and had puppies. So then I've had puppies, I've had dogs that have been five and then it bounced back up to six and they did that for a few days. So the actual, the only thing that we can tell you is a number of three or less is safe, safe, safe to have puppies. And if you're in Europe, that's gonna be about a 10, about a 10 nanograms per nanomole, or three nanogram, or three if you were talking about nanograms per milliliter. All right, so now we're gonna get rid of all this. <clears throat> so, how reliable is this 63 days, 61 days from AI? Well, it does vary, dependent partly on the number of puppies that are involved. 
So if you think of it this way, if your dog is really full of puppies, for a Frenchie, you know, that'd be like, you know, six, seven, five puppies, eight, nine, ten, huge litters of 11, 12, 13, they're not unheard of. In those situations, they tend to come actually about a day early. Um, other reasons that dogs can have puppies early is that something's gone wrong inside. You've got a puppy that's died inside the mum, and then she then starts the process of trying to get rid of that puppy. And depending on where that is, inside the uterus horn, it may be that other puppies are coming out too. So <clears throat> um, you can get caught short with this, where you can have puppies showing up before you expect them to come up. If you've got a big litter, then to see, to see puppies a day early is not un, unreasonable. And the good thing about a large litter is that it probably means that you got your AI right, because if you hadn't, you'd have got a small litter. So large litters tend to be on time or a day early. Small litters, a litter of one or two puppies, means that you probably didn't get your timing right on your AI. And now you're in a bit of a quandary here because you could, uh, you could um, <clears throat> have puppies a day or two early, or even a day or two late, or longer. I've been in a situation with a single puppy where I'm five days past the point that I thought that she should have gone into labor. And I had to wait and wait and wait and do progesterone tests. And I'm glad I did, because if I hadn't have done, I'd have probably lost that single puppy. It had been born prematurely, without fur on its face, not able to breathe properly, and the disappointing as it is for a single puppy, it's even more disappointing when you put your dog and your wallet through the expense of a C-section to end up with nothing at the other end of it. So, and I can tell you, the sad part about this is, is I'm gonna say that about 10% of Frenchies, they don't get it right and they get in trouble. Okay. Um, Right, so let's talk about being prepared for this, what you should have. Okay, so I already showed you, a, I'm going to go into this in some detail uh, on, the, uh, on the next uh, video where we talk specifically about all things going on. But the point here is, I'm going to put this monitor back in, <clears throat> what are the things that you need to have on hand? There's more stuff in the puppy care kit than you need for the actual well. But you, you should absolutely have some Vaseline. Why? Because if you take Vaseline and a dog is going into labor, to take some Vaseline and get a good dollop on your fingers and go get your fingers up inside a vulva and smear around a lot of Vaseline will definitely make the delivery easier on your mum and it may get you away from the situation where you have a stuck puppy. So you need to have, absolutely need to have Vaseline. Um, you should have a suction bowl because we've got to go through the process of shaking down puppies, um, getting fluid out of their lungs, and the suction bulb will help that situation. You absolutely should have a human baby bottle with a silicone nipple. Looks big, but it's absolutely fine. And some goat's milk. Because mum's milk may not come in right away, and you don't want puppies to go 12 hours without eating any food, having any food. You should have a stethoscope so you can listen to lungs and heart. This is not critical, but it's certainly nice to have, and it's something that you should have to evaluate your puppies after they're born and over the next week or so anyway. So you should get this anyway. <clears throat> you need, absolutely should have gloves. Absolutely you should have some hemostats so you can clamp off umbilical cords. You should have some stainless steel scissors so that you can cut umbilical cords. And you should have some dental wax so that you can tie off umbilical cords. And then other things that we provide in here are iodine swipes, and alcohol pads, and iodine swipes. And those are things that are part of that kit, which also you should have as well. We'll go into this, all this stuff in more detail in the next video. Um, okay. So this was really, you know, timing the whelp, I think would be the better wording of this. So I'm gonna have, uh, let's see how we do on time on this. What are we up to now? Yeah, we're already, yeah, we're already a long ways into this. We're gonna do, now we're gonna make this 4A, 4B. This is 4A that we just had. 4B is gonna be the actual process of the birth itself. 
Um, and look, before we get, before we say sign off on this, the other thing about all of this is be prepared to, I get people to call me out and say, we're having puppies, what do we do? It's like, what? Are you nuts? Do you not think about this process when you actually AI the dog? Did you not think about what you should be doing? I'm lecturing to you people. You've got to be on board with this. This is not something to be taken lightly. It's lots of fun, it's exciting, but it requires good planning. You don't plan this thing. The day the dog starts to go into labor, we have no plan. You've got to have a plan A and a plan B. Uh, if you're doing a C-section, plan A is you've got a vet on board, and plan B is you've got another vet on board, specifically if that vet's not gonna be around in the middle of the night on a Sunday when you've got to have a C-section. You can't just, you know, I get people say, oh, well, we'll just wait till Monday. Yeah, whatever. I mean, the dog's not on board with that. The dog's having puppies and the dog's having puppies. And you need to have a plan to, to know where you can go somewhere to have a C-section done if that's what's going on. And at the very least, have all the stuff in place if you're doing a natural whelp. Things like you know, the puppy care kit, the right environment. I mean, you know, our portable incubators, we'll talk more about this in the next video. These are all things that you should, you know, the whelping box, all of this stuff should have been set up ahead of time. And if it's not, then you are not doing your job. Simple as, simple as that, so there's your lecture. Okay, well we're gonna make a 4B, and a 4B is gonna be about specifically the actual process itself, whether it be a C-section, whether it be a natural whelp. And uh, I think that that's about it on this spot. Thanks for watching as always. We'd really love it if you subscribe to us. Uh, if you like what we're telling, great, give us a thumbs up. If you think we've missed things out, let us know, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, thanks for watching, bye everybody watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.